today. I'd like to welcome you today to Matters of the Heart Radio Broadcast Ministry. Uh, with my special co-host today in the studio with me, Sister Sarah. We want to thank God today for another opportunity to be in the studio, 99.1 FM on your radio dial. What a blessing it is on this uh, Saturday just to be here again. You know, we're truly blessed by God to have been awakened today and to be blessed to be in the studio to do another special broadcast and we have some special guests in the studio with us today as well but before i introduce our special guest today i want to thank all of you that have tuned in today to the broadcast as you do on each saturday whether we're on the first saturday second third or fourth uh you take the time to tune in and you could be you could be on another station but you keep it locked right there for the one-hour program of Matters of the Heart Radio Broadcast Ministry with radio host personality, Princess Denise Wright. And we thank you today. Now, before I continue with the program and start introducing our special guest today, in the studio with me, I have one of my sisters in Christ who has also came today um, to be a part of the program. I asked her a few days ago, and she gladly accepted the invitation. And that would be uh, Sarah Rich. Don't I sound richy? Sarah Rich. (laughs) 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 Anyway, (laughs) anyway, it is a blessing to have her here today. Uh, She is truly an anointed woman of God and a prayer warrior. And she's a part of uh, my prayer line, Matters of the Heart Prayer and Revival line. So I thank God for her today. And one thing that she loves to do is pray. So she's going to give us about a three-minute prayer this uh, afternoon. And so just stay tuned. If you're driving, just uh, listen. And if you're home, just just go ahead and get ready to keep it locked right here for the next 60 minutes. All right, this is Sarah. We'd like for you to go ahead and Open us up with our prayer today to bless this radio broadcast. We thank you. Oh, gracious and everlasting Father, as we come this afternoon, we thank you for your presence in our life. We thank you that you have allowed us to have another day that we haven't seen before. That when we rose this morning, that you were right there with us. We had the use and the activities of our limbs, and we were able to move and have our being. We recognize you as the God that is able to do anything but fail us. Regardless of whatever circumstances we may find ourselves in, whatever situation we may find ourselves in, and the word of God, it says that everything is just right for you. So as we come this day, Lord, lifting ourselves up to you, knowing that you are all-knowing God, a God that's able to do anything but fail, you know the inside workings of our hearts and our minds and our souls, you know every circumstance in every situation that would arise in our life. Not only that, but you are able to do anything but fail. In the word of God, it said that you are the I am that I am, and definitely you are that in the life of the believer. We thank you, almighty God, for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. When there was no way for us, when we were to die of an eternal separation from you, almighty God, you allowed your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary. In the word of God, it said that he took our sins and our sickness and disease and pestilence on that cross. And he continues to be our advocate on the right hand of Almighty God. So we come this day lifting him up and pleading the blood of Jesus. Pleading the blood of Jesus over our lives and over the lives of our loved ones and and those that we don't even know. Those who are walking in the world that do not know you, Almighty God. We ask Almighty God that you begin to do a work in their lives that only you can do. In the word of God, it says that you wish that none should perish, but all should have eternal life. And we seek that wish as you do, Almighty God, that none will escape, Almighty God, the love of God. Open up the hearts of those that do not know you today, Almighty God. Touch them, Almighty God, and place those of us that are on the battlefield for you, Almighty God, that we will enter into the pathway of those individuals, that we will be that light in a dark world for them, Almighty God, that we will boldly speak the word of God in season and out of season that we will be the instrument 
that you use, Almighty God, and the divine purpose that you have planned us for, Almighty God. Lord, we ask, Almighty God, that you touch those individuals now, Almighty God, that are struggling with COVID, Almighty God, that are struggling, Almighty God, with that because we know that you are supernatural anointing of healer. It's nothing that you cannot do. Those that are on that bed of affliction, Almighty God, we ask that you wrap them up in your arms, that you heal them and give them, Almighty God, your love. Lord, those that are burdened down and feel that they can't go on any longer, we ask, Almighty God, that you pick them up on every leaning side, that you let them know that you are there, that they are never alone because the Word of God tells us that we can depend on you. You're faithful and true to all that you say and all that you do. Oh, how we love you, Lord, and we depend on you. In times like this, you are our Savior. In times like this, you are our shield and our buckle. In times like this, you are all in all. In times like this, you are our mind regulator. In times like this, you are a peace that surpasses all understanding. In times like this, you are our shield and our buckle. In times like this, you are our sustainer and our provider. You are our everything, Almighty God. Lord, we ask that you use us in this radio station today in matters of the heart ministry, Almighty God, that you will touch the hearers that will hear the word that will be spoken and will touch those that, Almighty God, that do not know you. Do a work, Almighty God, in all our lives. Bless those, Almighty God, that will speak today on this line, Almighty God. Bless this radio station, Almighty God, and bless all of the participants, Almighty God, in matters of the heart ministry, all of the hearers that will hear the word of God today through this radio all ministry as well. As we plead your blood, as we stand on the promises, knowing that you are able. What an awesome God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What an unlimited God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the reverence. There is no God like you. And as we come before you, Lord, bowing down in our hearts and our minds and our souls, seeking you, Almighty God, do a work in our lives, Lord, that will give you the honor, the glory, the praise, the reverence, the thanks, and adoration. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God from whom all blessings flow. All I got to say, if, if I was ready to give a ministry message, I can just forget it because Sister Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> Sister Sarah has prayed, uh, prayed, prayed, prayed that she has welcomed the ministry of the Holy Spirit into the midst of this fellowship and this radio broadcast today. So praise God, Sister Sarah, for that prayer. I pray that someone really received it as an impartation into their heart and soul today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Um, I'm going to make one announcement before I introduce my special guest today. And what I like to do is that we will be doing another radio broadcast program on next Saturday. Uh, it will be a two-hour broadcast from uh, 12 o'clock p.m. until 2 o'clock p.m. Because we will be celebrating Matters of the Heart Radio Broadcast Ministry 17th year anniversary. That's how long we've been on the air for 17 years since August of 2004 up until this very moment, August of 2021. So we're going to have a lot going on for two hours with people calling in, people doing ministry messages and all kind of things that are going on. So I'm announcing it now for those that are out there that are listening. So you can tune in next week at 12 o'clock p.m. And it's all going to be about the uh, ministries of Matters of the Heart. Matters of the Heart uh, radio broadcast ministry, Matters of the Heart um, prayer and revival line, and Matters of the Heart uh, nonprofit organization. So we got a lot to talk about next next week as to what God has been doing for the last 17 years with uh, Matters of the Heart ministry and the segments of Matters of the Heart. So I'm looking forward for you calling in and we'll be I'll be sending some information out on Facebook through this week and getting with you to let you know please call in if you know me. <laughs> And whatever you want to say, it will be fine. So we uh, thank God for what he's doing now because victory today is mine. In Jesus' name, amen.
So with that being said, let me get ready to introduce my special guest today in the studio with me. We have uh, Hillary Douglas and uh, we have Curtis. Curtis, what was the last name? Izzard. Bizarre? Izzard. 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 With us today from Neighborly uh, Center, I think it's, Hillary told me just say the Neighborly because that's what uh, like what they like to announce it as. And so I am so honored to have them in the day. We and let's get ready for a great uh, introduction from them. A little uh, look like a little mini introduction of the ministry and of the nonprofit because they got some good information about helping elderly people senior citizens because senior citizens oh my gosh i love to take care of senior citizens i I actually took care of senior citizens for about 30 years starting from 1980 up until 2009 uh uh for all the ladies uh the elderly ladies that i took care of and more so ladies than the men and it was just a blessing it was just a blessing because I think I just fell in love with elderly people when I was a young child, a young child. I know I used to go visit all the elderly people. I think I probably was 12, 13, and I don't know why I was always going to their house, but as soon as I get there, they tell me about their children that live in other towns, and and then they say, what do you want to eat? And they got gonna feed you, and then they got two or three cakes ready for you. Uh, How many pieces of cake you want? (laughs) They just had everything. <laughs> they did. And I just went from one to other. Miss Callie and Miss Ola and Miss Janie, just always going to see the elderly people. And I never thought about that myself. I was like, gosh, why do I always go visit these elderly people? And um, But I did. And uh, I saw later on the reason why. Because eventually it meant that God was leading me to take care of the elderly people that I started doing in 19 in the 70s and the 80s helping them out all the way the 90s and all the way up until 2009 when my last two ladies died Miss Welch at 95 and Miss Martin at 94 and I had taken care of Miss Welch nine years and Miss Martin six and uh, I just said no more this is enough I just can't I just don't want to lose another one and start all over again. It's just too much, it's too much because I was with them all the time up into death and and praying a prayer release over them when they just was ready to go and just told them I loved them, but go on and get their rest. And that's what they did. So I love listening to anything about taking care of senior citizens. That's why Hillary and Curtis are here today. So it's good to hear. So, Hillary, would you like to start off and tell us a little bit about the Neighborly um, Nonprofit? Happy to. Thank you so much for having us, Princess Denise. What a what a blessing it is for us to be able to be here. And yes. I want to thank you for that. And I yes. also want to thank Sister Sarah for that beautiful, prayer. beautiful prayer. Yes. Very powerful. <laughs> um, so Neighborly has been serving the seniors of Pinellas County for now 55 years. We just celebrated our anniversary back in April. Oh, really? It was our 55th year, and it's really a beautiful story. Yes, yes. Where we we began serving meals out of the back of a van, uh, about 100 meals, and a group of concerned citizens joined together, and they Mm -hmm. made those deliveries, and it took about five hours. That actually was the launching pad into the first study, and then essentially the research um, became what is now known as the Meals on Wheels program in America. Mm -hmm. And Neighborly has been, as I said, serving seniors in a variety of capacities since uh, 1966. So most people know us as... uh, Meals on Wheels. And Meals on Wheels is a program whereby we deliver uh, a hot, nutritious meal to homebound seniors in our county. Uh, We also have a program called Senior Dining where we invite uh, older adults who may be isolated, um, but um, 
still have issues of, of nutrition and hunger, and we bring them together at eight locations in the county. Oh, and they really? can be with their peers, have a hot, nutritious lunch, they have activities, and if necessary, we'll pick them up and we will also uh, take them back home. Is that also done on the same day for all of them? Or do you do it different dates? So we like offer, mm-hmm. mon- uh, so uh, Meals on Wheels is provided Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. and the Senior Dining Program is also provided Monday through Friday. Okay, Monday through Friday. Okay, gotcha. What a lot of people don't know is that Neighborly was actually the first organization in the entire country to offer what is known as adult daycare. So we have three of these centers in the county. One is in Palm Harbor, one's in Largo, and the third just opened on 54th Avenue South here in St. Petersburg. And we provide care, daycare services for individuals who may have memory challenges, dementia, Mm -hmm. cognitive disorders, and so on. And every Monday through Friday, we go to their homes, we pick them up, we transport them into one of the three centers. They're with their peers, they have activities, cognitive, physical fitness, activities Mm -hmm. as well as a nutritious uh, breakfast and lunch and then later in the day we also transport them back home oh now certainly that's a blessing to those individuals Yes, it is. (laughs) but imagine what that does to a family yes family members they are perhaps living with or maybe a spouse who can continue to work Uh, they don't have to keep a a watchful eye on their loved one all day Um, so it is as as probably you would say a blessing for for families and then lastly transportation Um, many people don't know that neighborly also provides transportation to older adults in the county so we will provide transportation to and from medical appointments uh, dialysis chemotherapy physical therapy occupational therapy doctors appointments pharmacies and then also to shopping. So I've been with Neighborly since February of 2020. We were okay. serving at that time mm-hmm. approximately a thousand people every day in the county. And almost overnight in the pandemic, we began serving 2,500 people in the county. And oh, so that is right. the yes. current number of, of older adults, adults mm-hmm. we're serving today. And I invited Curtis here because he has been instrumental in making sure that many seniors in our South St. Petersburg region get their home delivered meals every week. Yes, I've heard, uh, I think one of my friends in Tampa, Prudence, uh, her mother uh, gets some of those uh, senior citizen meals and she was just telling me how blessed they are just to have that. I can She can just go in there and warm that up in, in the microwave while she's trying to work at home as well so it is just just a just a blessing yes i've heard heard so many people through the years getting those dinners and everything but i didn't know that you uh um uh were just tra- taking them to doctor's appointments and things like that uh because i know a lot of times i've i think i've heard people say that uh their insurance if it pays for them to get a uh, ride to the doctor and maybe come back and get them like you know come back and pick them up or something like that but I didn't know that you provide that service that's well, good the 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 thing that may be a very uh, big interest to your listeners is mm-hmm. that a, a majority of our programs are funded by the older americans act and if you're not familiar with that those are your federal tax dollars mm-hmm. and so our transportation our uh, senior dining and our Meals on Wheels programs are offered to these individuals at no charge. Um, and some insurances do cover the adult daycare yes. program, uh-huh. but if if insurance does not, it is a nominal fee uh, per hour, and you couldn't hire a CNA to come into your home um, for uh, for what uh, our fee is. It's about $11 an hour, so it's very inexpensive if your loved one needs adult daycare. Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. All righty. But I'll tell you, the rock star here is Curtis because <laughs> he is a, a volunteer. Okay. And, and and it is only because of people like Curtis that we can do the work that we did. And I, I want to give your listeners some perspective. So in 2019, our Meals on Wheels volunteers delivered a little over 333,000 meals. Curtis, last year, along with his fellow volunteers, mm-hmm. in the middle of a pandemic, delivered yes. 589,000 
meals. Whoa, wait a minute now. Wait so a minute. it took 948 volunteers, and Curtis what? was one of them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and we were mm -hmm. able to serve those seniors 589,000 meals, and that's that's only because of volunteers like Curtis. And so much was is so much was needed. Oh my gosh! Yes, especially what individuals were going through during the pandemic last year. Oh my goodness. That is amazing, Curtis. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's a blessing to be able to support. It yeah. is. Mm -hmm. It is. See, now, I'm all yes. for that when you're taking care of the elderly. All right now, Curtis. Yes, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> oh, I'm a big supporter of that. Oh, my gosh. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. Anything. That's when Hillary, I think I talked to her three weeks ago or something when she first contacted me about doing the radio broadcast and when she just said senior citizens, I was just like, oh my gosh, I want to hear anything about my elderly people. That's what you're doing to help them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Even though I'm not out doing that right now, I thank God for all the years of, of, of taking care of them because they, are, they just need someone to um, spend time with them, listen to them, and even if they tell you the same thing over and over and over again, <laughs> you just you just listen to it because I, I know one of my elderly ladies got uh, to call herself straightened me out one time. Miss Martin was kept saying, telling me all about what she was doing doing the civil rights thing uh, with, with Martin Luther King and everything and. And, and so when she's talking, I'm just saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. She's like, how many times are you going to keep saying, uh-huh, uh-huh? I said, well, Ms. Martin, well, I hear this every day. Ms. Martin, <laughs> she said, you know, well, you stop saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, I will. <laughs> she was straightening me out. No more, uh-huh, uh-huh. I was like, I, so I started saying, oh, well, thank you, Miss Martin. Oh, um, really? Oh, that's amazing, Miss Martin. Oh, yes, okay. So I got myself together. <laughs> so, Princess Denise, one of the things I asked Curtis to talk about okay. was an, his experiences. Because it is one thing for me to tell you about the incredible volunteers that we have. But I think uh, it has far greater meaning when you hear it through the perspective of somebody who is actually making sure these seniors are fed every week. I certainly would love to hear that. And before we have uh, uh, Mr. Curtis come forth, um, Donna, let me know when we got about three minutes before commercial break, okay? Right. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, Curtis. All right. Uh, I'll let you know a little bit about uh, what got me into Neighborly because uh, some of the same stuff you talked about, um, supporting senior folks, and uh, that was my parents. Uh, I spent almost 24 years in the military. I traveled around a lot, and I wasn't there a lot of that time uh, growing up uh, as I got as they got older. And uh, I lost both my parents within the last uh, 12 years. Mm -hmm. So you know, it takes takes neighbors and family taking care of each other. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciated that with other folks helping take care of, of my family while I was out yes. around the world, uh, yes, supporting sir. you know supporting the country. And then uh, as I lost my mom, uh, I said to have my dad gets sick or if my dad has problems. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and get out and make sure I'm helping help take care of my dad. So I spent 24 years in the military. My dad, uh, he is a disabled vet. He was on uh, di dialysis. He was diabetic. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister was helping take care of him, but his health kind of started going down. So I went out and I got out of the military and I was a caregiver for a couple of years, helping take care of my dad until he passed away. But the reason why Neighborly hit me uh, as something I wanted to support is because that's exactly the kind of thing that I, it would have been beneficial if I would have known about for my dad because my sister went yes. to help. But things simple like going to dialysis. My sister is about 4'11". It's hard for her to even get, you know, <laughs> get my dad up to get, you know, simple things like getting getting up or, or getting down the steps. Yes. And we, we all know our seniors, you know, they take pride <laughs> in being able to do their own things. Yes. Exactly. Yes. They may or may yes. not we help. So it's yes. important to have somebody they have a connection with, Yes. you know, that they, they feel more comfortable with. And uh, that's the kind of thing that uh, for me, once you start going out, they see somebody 
They can make a little connection to it. I try to talk to the individuals and get a little feel of something. Like you said, it, you hear a story or, or you bring something up that they, they at least know you paid attention to or, or, or they see your face. I, I started doing a bunch of different I started out on a uh -huh. bus. So I would go out and fill in wherever I could uh, as a retired military, uh, just part-time real estate. So I had free time. So I said, hey, wherever I can uh, fill in. So I had a couple days. And then um, I also did the bus. So I'd pinch, kind of pinch it on places where I need to go. And it, it is amazing that you will see some of the people uh, still remember you. I mean, I would do a, a route, and I'd be gone. I'd pick up another route. Some some days I do uh, anywhere between uh, 35 to 45 meals um, some days. And uh, okay. the folks, they remember you uh, yeah. when you leave a route and come back to another route if you're gone for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Or just the little small things. And they feel open to ask you questions and talk to you about stuff, especially like uh, COVID. I mean, transportation for COVID or shots or different things. So to me, like I said, it's important. This connection is something that I wish I would have known about for my family members yeah. uh, except to, to look out for each other. And that's a way for me to give back. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important also. Well, thank you. And we're going to... Uh uh, get ready to go to a uh, commercial break here. But when we come back, hey, we got a whole segment of 30 minutes to talk about more information that is uh, so valuable, uh, taking care of our senior citizens. And uh, uh, I'm already, my ears are perked up yes. to listen to the to the rest of this. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. But we're we're going to uh, try to do this timely so we can, um, can come right back in about three or four minutes after uh, our commercial break. So the studio does have to run little commercials for about four minutes. And we come back and the rest of it. Is talking about our, our neighborhood senior citizens and what we're doing for them, what we can do for them, and what is being done. So uh, keep it locked right there. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right, let's go to commercial break. Thank you. Gospel lovers, are you ready?